All right, we're back. Welcome to We Sam's World, episode two hundred. Oh my God, what episode are we on? That's a that's a really good question. Is this two seventy seven? Yes, my, it is two seventy seven. Lucky seven, maybe. Yeah, two seventy seven. Uh, every Thursday at three p.m. Pacific time here on Adobe Radio. Episode three hundred is coming up. I want to talk about this. This is going to be a very special episode. Um, we are going to do it a little bit differently. What's going to happen is the actual guys night game portion will be a separate YouTube video. Um, and then we're going to basically be doing a postmortem postmortem, excuse me, of the episode with, uh, Isaiah and Jordan and everybody here. Uh, that way we can uh, replay some of the best moments from it and catch up properly after the shenanigans. So stay tuned. Um, we have some awesome guests lined up. Uh, this is the first episode. I'm back from Chicago. We had a couple of replay episodes, so thank you guys for sticking with us. And let's not waste any time. Uh, our guest today is Lance Williams. He is the co-host of Right Place and Right Time. And th this podcast that you do is basically the daughter show of yes, In so, Love With The Process, which so, is also on Spotify. Right. Okay. Um, uh, the the host of In Love with the Process is my buddy Mike Pesci, mm -hmm. uh, and he's been doing that show for I want to say probably eight years now. Um, and that me going on the show as a recurring guest eventually led to us going, we should do something together, and that became Right Place, Right Time. That's awesome. Yeah. And how long have you guys been doing Right Place and Right Time? We're on our tenth episode now. That's great. Yeah, it's been uh, really good. Uh, I was listening to the photographer episode recently. Great, great, great. Yeah, yeah, and that was. It's really interesting listening to people's stories, and especially with the the latest like photographer episode that you guys mm -hmm. have done. Um, there seems to be a common thread with people who just go, you know what, I'm gonna put all my energy into the work and just let the universe mm -hmm. unfold the path in front of me, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna go with the flow. Yeah, let's use that expression. And then a lot of times, I'm gonna say more often than not things start developing for that person. Yeah, I think you gotta have a little fuck it in your system. Can I cuss on here? I can cuss? Yeah, you gotta have some fuck it in your system. Yeah. I think, and I love what, what Zach was saying too, like that he made the choice that all the money he would make would come from his art. Mm -hmm. And then going, okay, so then I have to say no to these things. And so it immediately puts you to the fire. Like, okay, well then you have to eat, you have to find somewhere to live, you have to bathe. So then how do you make those fundamentals happen with your art? Mm -hmm. You have to go put the work in. I think that's where you could, like build a build a really good work ethic. Yeah, I've always been a proponent of trial by fire. I oh, feel yeah. like you learn so much oh, yeah. that way. Oh yeah, some really interesting experiences uh, uh, that For I've you? had personally. Yeah, but I want to ask you what experiences trial by fire have you had? Because I want to give the listeners Ooh. a little bit of back backstory on us. Mm -hmm. um, I met you at IDSA. Mm -hmm. You were a student there. I was a yeah. teacher in your class, and this is a fun little memory I have because I've gotten this comment before. A lot some people have asked me and you said this or you go you go you go um, are you East Coast based yeah are you from New York and I'm like no I'm not from New York no, no I asked you from the East Coast I never asked anybody from New York you didn't say New York no no I just asked you from the East Coast okay because when other people ask like oh are you from New York I'm like no there's more fucking places on the East Coast than New York so okay. I never asked anyone from New York but East Coast because you had a vibe too I was like maybe he's from back east maybe he's from back home why? What, then what's the vibe? Because when I think of East Coast, I know there's more East Coast, but I always think that. Oh, it's easy. You, you seem kind of like an asshole, but I liked you. Mm. So that's yep. sort of like the barometer. You're like, seems like a dick, but I like this guy. Mm. Maybe he's from back home. Is mm. it because I'm too, was, I was too blunt in class? I made too many people cry? <laughs> Is that why? No, no, no. I think, <laughs> although, you, you definitely had a brashness to you that I, I, I enjoyed watching. I think there was even like one day where you'd said something and I disagreed with you and we were talking. I was just like, ah, no, I, I understand, but I disagree. And you were like, okay. And you just kept moving. And I was like, <laughs> I like this guy. He's all right. I, I don't know why I feel like I'm like a mobster. I'm like, he's all right. That we some, he's going to be something one day. I can see it in his eyes. <laughs> Damn it. I want to remember what we disagreed about. I have no idea. Oh, shit. It was something in the way that, uh, something about uh, script analysis. Yeah, and then like process. I don't fucking. You know. were definitely wrong, though. That's all. Wow. Well, in my heart, I know you were wrong. Yeah, yeah. We'll say that. It's on you. We're on your show. I was wrong. <laughs> you come on right place, some, right time, sometime, and I'll uh, I'll be right. Oh, I would love to. Yeah. Yeah, and then I'll I'll come prove on. it to you. <laughs> you don't even remember what the fuck we talked about. 
you didn't even remember this until now. <laughs> so yeah, that's how we met, and yep. um, you actually did some good work. My Thank really, you. S- this is something I do remember. You had that scene in the desert. Oh, my Jafar scene. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And what I liked about walking you through that, um, you actually very you, you committed mm-hmm. to the to the uh, direction and the imaginative circumstances, which I, I really enjoyed. And um, I've been enjoying listening to uh, the episodes on the podcast and specifically with people's processes are so unique. Oh, yeah. uh, people who go from like not doing what they want to do in life to what they want to do in life. Mm-hmm. Everybody's different, but at the same time, there are these like little universal wisdoms, universal gems that, that's that you start noticing in everybody's mm-hmm. journeys and um with your latest episodes have you noticed like anything in particular where you're like oh shit that this is like something that keeps bringing up that i keep seeing yeah come up? well so with our whole show it's right place right time because we're sort of investigating and discussing like is that phrase that we hear all the time oh i just I was in the right place at the right time is that real or is that bullshit yeah. if it is real what are the things that you do to make that happen? How do you set yourself up for those moments? Can you even do anything? Mm. And so what I've noticed as a common thread is it has always been about attitude. Attitude. Your attitude towards it. Because we can say, oh, it's manifesting. Okay, yeah. But that requires a positive attitude, a belief in self, a belief in these circumstances actually being capable of happening in your life, right? Or it's... Well, I, I really want to, I really want to, you know, let's use identity as an example. I really want to go to identity and take class and then get signed. Okay. But is your work ethic present? If your attitude is very positive towards those goals, then you'll most likely put the work in. And so everyone that we've talked to, it's always, it always comes back to like, I was just, you know, I, I set my mind to it and I really believed in this thing. And you just feel the positivity and the way people talk about themselves in that moment. And it all goes back to that, like just having a, a saying yes to yourself. I think that's really the core attitude is just saying yes to yourself and fucking believing it. Mm-hmm. I, I agree with that. To, to branch off the, the, the attitude portion of what you're saying. I just want to acknowledge that we some just agreed with me. <laughs> For now. For now. You're going to scoreboard. Lance won. Bing. <laughs> Oh shit! Uh, that reminds me, we got to see the gorilla vi- video, the gorilla and zookeeper video today. We're going to talk about that. Yes, yes, that's something we have to watch. Is. I was telling Lance earlier. I will, I'll, I'll continue on our conversation, but there's at least one video a week which brings brings me yeah. so much joy and happiness. And this is a video we must discuss this week. Does it feel a little sinister to you guys when he says it like that? It brings me so much joy and happiness. I feel like a dictator with my finger pointed up like this. Well, canceled. Right there. Canceled? Just like that. Oh, uh, no, quick. we said <laughs> there's a lot of other things. No, uh, we've been good about the show. Uh, so I think with that right place, right time, mm-hmm. the common thread that I've seen with, with every single successful person is their work ethic. Mm-hmm. Specifically, like how much work yeah. are you putting into something? Mm-hmm. Eventually, like eventually you get to a point where people can't ignore you anymore. Correct. And yeah. I I am obsessed with that because it it seems to be it seems to have helped me mm. get to that next level and um I feel like natural talent and even attitude can only get you to a certain point. Yep. Eventually like right. your technique has to come into play mm-hmm. with whatever you're doing. Yeah, but I think if if we were to to marry those ideas right cuz I think you're you're 100% right with with the talent thing like mm. That's it was that phrase, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. You know, you could say that slower. Sorry. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Oh, okay. Ooh. So you could have all this natural innate skill, but if you're fucking off instead of doing the work, someone will catch up. Someone will just get better. You know? Mm. And what just why did you point at him? I don't know. I was just I, I just I haven't seen <laughs> Peyton in three weeks. Me? Yeah, I just pointed at you. <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> see him. Him. <laughs> like the fucking family guy monkey. <laughs> um yeah so so i I 100 agree with you there i think it's it it has to be the work you put into it i think that starts with the attitude it starts with Mm. you know your because what what is it that drives the work ethic what do you what do you think motivates that purpose yeah yeah um and also something else but i will let you know what that something else is right after our commercial break i said break weird yeah break we some take two 
And we're back from the break. <laughs> um, the um, yeah, the purpose you find in in your life is yeah. really important. Why you're doing something mm. is crucial, oh, and yeah. and and your passion and love for something mm. is, is it has to be there. We were talking about earlier. The I never com- condemn someone mm. on where they're at in their artistic level right. as an actor. Right. They could be starting off or in the middle or advanced i don't care where you're Mm -hmm. at what i do care about what really gets me annoyed is how much work are you putting Mm -hmm. in or lack of work are you putting in yeah because you should love that part Mm -hmm. i love getting a script for the first time because it feels it feels like i'm a white belt again Mm -hmm. every time i get a new script i'm like okay i don't know what this is great i'm starting with a clean slate let me okay discovering something do you play video games at all oh yeah Okay, oh, yeah. what are some of your favorite video games? Oh, God. I'm, I'm fucking itching to play Rebirth. Um, so okay. Final Fantasy VII is probably my top ones. Last of Us 1 and 2, I've played them each multiple times. Uh, the God of War franchise. Um, I, you, I keep going. Uh, have you, shit. Uh, I'll name two got? of my favorite games. Elden Ring? I haven't played that, but I hear it's so good because the boss fights is what interests me. Because I, I like a good challenging boss fight. I don't want to get... like. Because I'm not, I'm not the guy that's like, I'm going to piss off break the controller. But yeah. I don't like feeling like, a okay, well, then what the fuck is the point of this? Like, how, how do we progress? Oh I like God, the, the challenge of okay. you have to play it and learn and watch and observe and then go, okay, cool. Now now I get how to beat this person. I okay. love that shit. Okay. Keenan the Bridge of Spirits is another really good one you should play as well. He's a big video game guy. I don't know that one. Do you know that one? No. I, what is it? Keenan and the Bridge of Spirits. I have no it's idea what that fascinating. is. Fascinating. Uh, boss fights are so good. The combat is, it's very, there's like a slow-mo mechanic in it, so like it automatically just makes it a little more fun. It's the shit. Okay. Yeah, magic mysticism, kid in the woods. There's little cute little furry dudes you collect. It's the shit. Wow. They should have sold more toys. Is this on uh, GameCube? Um, Oh, why? Oh, wow. Wow. Is that a Pikmin joke? Are you, how old are you? (laughs) What is happening? (laughs) That was for you, man. I'm timeless. We don't bring up Anthony's name on here. <laughs> all right. Why not? Because Anthony's he's the guy. because he got invited back on Criminal Minds for more episodes, mm-hmm. and now I have to book another <laughs> s- job just to make sure he stays like below me. Oh. Yeah, I, I get annoyed when he books work. This makes me think about being in the circle, and uh, Anthony's always like, you know, guys like we, Sam, guys like Adam, me. You know, these guys were staying up all night long memorizing the lines, and now I kind of feel like doesn't seem like we, Sam was. I don't know. Uh, we, Sam. Uh, you letting Anthony pull out in front of you like that? What's going on? Hey, I Talk think... Talk about your work ethic and attitude. Honestly, I think they cast him because of the way he looks, like decrepit. Yeah. And so... <laughs> it's so wild. <laughs> he doesn't look old at all. I love oh, listening does. to your episode. I was like, how old is this guy, though? I want to know. How old is he really? Anthony? Yeah. Oh, uh, like towards the end? Jesus Christ. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Who raised you? Do you want to know what music I'm going to play at his funeral? Sure. Do you have it queued up? I think it's going to be even better if you have it just ready to go. I don't care if we get flagged for this. <laughs> you ready Anthony, for this? I'm sorry. <laughs> Anthony is going to be so upset. <laughs> Here's my thing. Why would he be upset? Pump up the jam? That's yeah. the shit. <laughs> what do you mean? I also love how she says pump. Pump it. <laughs> Can you imagine family why members crying as that it? music is playing? <laughs> oh I don't know God. why you give him like, like oh. his, he, they bring his casket out. What is this, fucking Space Jam? They're going to like run him through. And now, standing at six feet under. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. That was much needed. Um, there you go. Okay. Back to the video games. Yeah. You said you like Back to uh, what were we talking about before the video games that led me into the video games thing? I don't Passion, know. love, and the oh, discovery. Of life. Thank you, thank you, wow, guys. You guys are helpful. Holy shit! Thank yeah. you. <laughs> They're great. They're the best. I couldn't do this without them. No, I um, know. Yeah. No. Um, okay. Shadow of the Colossus. Have you played oh, that? Oh yes. What are you kidding me? Okay. The great. seventy-six steps of enlightenment. Come on, talk to me. Oh my god! Finally, I meet somebody who's who likes the yes. game. Yes. Yes. Was in. Okay. Yes. The atmosphere. Mm-hmm. With Shadow of the Colossus, when you first start off, mm-hmm. that feeling you get, that yeah. discovery yeah. of like what, oh my gosh, the potential of what this what this world could yeah. invite is that that's how I feel when I get a breakdown of a scene. Fascinating, because I love that. 
I want I feel something inside of me that's like wants to it wants to like grow out I know that sounds fucking weird but like it wants to grow out onto the page and I want to express I'm like okay what oh cool and then I I, I find like oh how can I make this mine and unique mm -hmm. and there's a great uh, artist that I love his name is Alex Gray mm -hmm. and he talks about how the creative spirit like uh, uh, whatever you want to see it as there's this like creative <sighs> well mm -hmm. and uh, 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 like the creator of all things and it, and it works through you so yeah you have to be ready you have to be in tune with the instrument that you're in control of to allow that creative freedom to go forth whatever the right. creative aspect is or craft and another aspect that i love that keeps me on my toes if you don't stay tuned up with your instrument that mm. creative spirit moves on to something oh, someone yeah. else oh, yeah. to allow whatever expressive art needs mm -hmm. to be expressed and that's why I always feel like my art is never truly from me. It's from something mm -hmm. bigger than me. And then right. having that mindset allows me to, there's a freedom with that, knowing that, oh, cool, I'm just like the vessel in which this thing goes. Like right. the pressure is almost off in a yeah. certain way. Um, real it's, quick, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, say it's like, if, if are you familiar with Final Fantasy VII? Yeah. So the idea of the live stream? Oh, I, I know of the game. I haven't played it. I'm a 10 guy. God that's damn. the only one I pay 10. 10? What yeah, about 10 too? Didn't you didn't like play Tentu? You didn't like Tentu? Okay, didn't like it, it's fine. If you didn't play it, I'd be like, I gotta there give it a shot. There was too much dancing or something. And There's a lot like, of dancing. Yeah, and I'm like, this is not what I signed up great, for. Though. No blitz ball, though, which is kind of trash. See what I mean? You just talked me out of it. Again. Uh, you know? 10 was amazing. I cried yeah. at 10 at the end. I cried. Really? Yeah. What about uh, Kingdom Hearts? You play Kingdom Hearts? Oh, first one, amazing. <laughs> you S second and third. Guys, the third's what are we, garbage. What are we the doing? The third's here? garbage, but the second was great. You're wild. Come on, second was great. The fucking end cut scene? The way they cut it to the music? Come on, you're a fucking film guy. What do you mean? You don't like that cut scene? I'm not saying the cut scene was bad. Cutscene's amazing. I'm just saying they but started it's good going because off the, the story. edge. They, they went off the edge. Ah. They went off the okay, edge. Okay, what was off the edge for you? It's too big. You guys have, uh, it's way too big. Way too big, first of all. You want more worlds? Uh, what, you on a fucking diet? <laughs> you want less Lance, worlds? Lance. <laughs> Commercial break. Commercial break. <laughs> It comes back. You're not here. I'm like, right. Lance Welcome had back to, go. to Weesem's world. Just Weesem. <laughs> you need to play Elden Ring. That is my okay. favorite game of all time. It has the uh, um, that same effect of the atmosphere of Shadow of Colossus. Mm -hmm. But if I'm if I'm not mistaken, it's there's no direct narrative you follow per se. It's more that you get a chance to just sort of play how you want through the world. Is that correct? Peyton, what do you think? Or am I I, no, I Dark think Souls? he's yeah, I know, I think he's right. But, I mean, there's an overarching like story and kind of lore to mm -hmm. the world of Elden Ring, but it's not saying like go here at this time. Right, it's just right. you go wherever you want. Eventually, you'll reach the end. That's but who's to say cool. how you get there? I think that's it. Accurate. Kind of makes me think of like when the first time I played Skyrim, felt like that, where I was like, oh, I can just sort of wander yes. and kind of do whatever. A little more freedom than yeah. Skyrim, I think. Oh no, shit. because Skyrim still kind of has like that narrative story, like yeah, you gotta yeah. go talk to the Greybeards, then go yeah. do this. Whereas ah, uh, the Stormcloaks, just kind of the Stormcloaks. Yeah, cloaks, yeah, yeah. Did you, did you did you do the uh, vampire and robo stuff too? So yeah. Wisem, can you switch with him? Yeah, yeah it's all good. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> he he hasn't played Skyrim. Yeah, and we Skyrim. keep telling him. Dude, I played Sky. The Sky Cloaks, they're so good. Storm Cloaks. Storm Cloaks. Is that? A, are you doing a bit? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Elden Ring. What else you got? No, Elden Ring is. Uh, I'm telling you. Alex was really cool. She was like helping me at, at certain points play mm. the game. Yeah, yeah. Because I needed help playing the game. Like I needed like a team of people tell me, okay, what about this? Like yeah. what are the chances? Like it's it's way more fun like that too. Like when I played Keenan the Bridge of Spirits, um, my homie George and JJ were there. Most most I think most of the time George was there with me watching, and it just became this thing where like you just like grab you a snack, grab you a little beverage, come sit down on the couch, and be like. You just get into it, and they're like, ah, why don't you try this or this? And you're like, oh, fuck, right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then when you get that that victory, and everyone just, ah! Like yeah. It's, because it's not just you anymore. Right? right, right, right. It's that communal experience. And I think that's the shit. I wish more games uh, or more game developers were making the co-op campaign story and not fucking Call of Duty, where you're both playing the same guy in the campaign six hours. I mean, like, a, a, a lengthy story where we can both play, and if we're in the same on the same console, right. I just give you the two-player controller. Mm -hmm. Like, what happened to that? You know what I mean? 
I don't know, man. I really wish that I was back. It. Yeah. I, I I just love when a game gives me that atmosphere where I really mm -hmm. feel I'm in a different world. And Shadow of the Colossus and Elden 100%. Ring give give me those those feelings. Um, and I wish more students felt that way, or the, the students that, like that I've been working with. I mean, there there are students who bring a, an amazing amount of creativity and yeah. and are working at it. And but I, sometimes it's just like I w w come on, like yeah. don't like if you want to be paid for this, don't you want to <laughs> don't you want to make it entertaining? Do you yeah. really think you deserve to be like paid forty grand an episode for right. this work? Right. Even the thing, like, I was talking with to Mike about this the other day. Um, and I mentioned to Peyton earlier, like, where I live in Hollywood, right behind the Dolby Theater. So anything that I do, I'm pretty much walking to go. Mm -hmm. And so they've been setting for the Oscars for the last month. And so you get to walk through that big archway where they have, and you do this all the time, like, it's the pillars with all the Best Picture nominees up, right? Or the Best Picture winners. Um, but now it's it feels even more special because they have all the draperies up and they finally laid all the red carpet out it's plastic on it but like you're still sitting there where like they have all the pillars and everything for the the big step and repeat is already there on hollywood boulevard with all the stuff and like the red carpet's there and you're getting to walk through this thing and i went through and it, i had done it a few times but this was the first time i had the carpet and everything was fully up and i said okay I'm gonna, I, they're probably going to shut this off soon for us so i'm going to walk through and just really take the time to embrace this and picture this and I, we can call it manifesting, but I think it, the other thing is just really, really like calling on that, like you said, that that creative source, mm -hmm. whatever that thing is that's chosen you to be the vessel for, because you could have been a fucking accountant, a lawyer, an attorney, a mechanic, anything else, any other reasonable job, but this is what called you, and so it's it's taking a moment to be present with that thing and say. I fucking believe in this. I believe in the reason that I was called to do this. I believe in the choices I've made that have gotten me here. I believe in the path that I'm on, that I'm not, I'm not invited to this event when this happens on Sunday, but I fervently believe that one day I will get to be here. And it won't be, be just because the awards are the shit, but it's because I've worked my ass off to get to a place where my work is recognized enough that I'm allowed to be at this place where other people's work is recognized. I think that's, that's really the... the would you want to tap into? Sorry, I wasn't listening. Um, <laughs> how do you how do you unplug his mic? How do you unplug his mic? Punch him in the face. You have a punchable face too. I've heard that before too. What you I know what it hey, is? Hey, hey, hey. Oh, thank you. Hey, thank you. This hey, is great, actually. It doesn't you, sound great. Are you muting my mic? Please, please. I don't need a mic. Can we mute him? You think I need a mic? <laughs> is that how you project? Yeah, get you on the theater more. It's the the it's rock the is coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, he's gonna take your candy ass. That's terrible. It's like you you sound like an actual rock, dude. No, we actually have the rock do promos for us. All our promos are from the rock. They don't. Yeah, we do. They don't. <laughs> I think we do. Yeah. yeah, we've convinced some AI? people. We've convinced some people in the studio that I'm Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> with is that, here doing yeah. with that, <laughs> you want a little taste? I don't like how you asked that. You want a Go, ahead. Taste? Go ahead. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Dwayne The Rock Johnson here, letting you know We Sam's World is the number one show you're going to listen to. Don't miss it. Okay. Shifting gears. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not seen Dune, and I want to see Dune. Shame. I want to watch the whole movie. Okay? Yeah. So why should I watch Dune? Because you said it's good. You watched it 13 times like 13 a weirdo. Times. 13 times. That's yeah. weird to watch saw something 13 the, saw times. the first one three times in the theater. What? And then, yeah. And then um, 10 more times at home once it came out. Yeah. What about it? It was making you see it that much. It uh, it fascinated me the pace. I'm also a massive Hans Zimmer fan. If if we were to look at music in general, my favorite artist across any genre would be Hans Zimmer. Okay. I fucking love his music. Um, and so watching the movie, what also mm -hmm. blew me away was I think – looking at what they were doing with the performances based off what I read from the book, right? And so at the time when it came out on HBO Max, I was in another acting class. And so whenever I would rehearse, I would just put Dune on. And I'd rehearse and Dune would end and I would restart it and just keep rehearsing. And then I took my little breaks or like, just wanted to daydream. I would watch them do a scene and be like, right, this is it at a higher level. Right, 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 go back to my work. That's why you were good at the desert scene. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now I know. Yeah. <laughs> If I'm I gave a, you any other scene, yeah. 
That's why you picked the scene with Jafar and the. Actually, no, the scene wasn't that at all. I I I created it as this Jafar thing, and then in class you were like, "Right, so you've been in the desert this long." Da, da, da. I'm like, "Yep, yep, yep," and you were like, "So you should be thirsty." And I went, "Fuck, I didn't think about that." Right. right. Okay. I forget what the scene was. Uh, you it was saw a person, somebody... a person, be yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. You yeah. made up the scenario completely. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Um. Okay. Okay. That so let me ask you this. Do you that like sci-fi? Doesn't... Yeah, I like sci-fi. Okay. Like Office. Huh? The Office. Why are you like this? I just, what? <laughs> Do people like this? What? Do, this, they you, love you it. Think? Oh, okay. Yeah, That's number one show on Adobe Radio, baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Primetime's back. If, if you... Oh, right, here's what I'll say. All right. Especially because in, in our, our society, right, like there's this, there's a lot of like religious zealotry that just happens naturally, like a lot of tension around why I believe this, why I believe this, right? And I haven't I think, seen it, but yeah, go ahead. And so with Dune, it's a, it's a cautionary tale of what the Messiah is in a society. And I think looking at it that way makes it a very fascinating watch because then most of the time you get the stories of the Messiah or the one and they're like, I don't know if I can do it. Yeah. And then they get there and they're like, I'm the shit at it. Ah! Yeah. Right. Like yeah. you don't really get the, but how is this actually bad for the good people also? How is this, how is this changing this person for a negative? Are they aware of how it's changing them for a negative? But can they see the greater purpose and go, I know this makes me an asshole now, but fuck it. Got to do this. <clears throat> and I okay. think those, those movies tap into that very well. Okay. Yeah. You know? All right. Plus also like you literally wouldn't have star Wars without Dune. The fucking Hodorowski's Dune that never got made is how H.R. Geiger came on to develop all the look of the Gady Prime planet for the Harkonnen family in Dune. And when his movie got scrapped, all of that production design went to Alien. So the entire look of the sets of Alien, like all that, all that like creepy black slimy shit, that whole, that's all because of Dune existing. Mm, okay. All right. I'm in. The Bible is actually no, it's not. No, that was, that was first. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, dude, you should watch it. If you, if it's, it's the, it's the fucking, it's the tentpole sci-fi. Like all sci-fi comes from Dune. All right, you actually won me with that last thing you said. It's the tentpole for sci-fi. So, no well, good. We'll see. I'm glad you know you like tents. You go camping. All right, commercial break. Or are we still good? Are we still good. Okay. I like you have kind of like a between two ferns thing going on, where it's like nice chit chat, and then you kind of like throw a little insult, throw one back. Yeah, it keeps things going. Yeah, I like it. What else you got in your fucking little sticky note there? Nothing. Uh, this is going to wow. be rough. For the super next, ho- we, super have, host. we have 30 minutes left, and this is going to be rough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, talk, talk to me more about... Uh, you were oh, talking about ahead. video games earlier. That really interests me. Oh, that, oh, that interests you? Yeah, okay. that was really cool. That's all I have on it. He's heard me talk about Elden Ring. They both have, like, millions of times. I always feel like when I start talking yeah. about something that I've repeated a lot of times on the show, mm-hmm. uh, they're, like, sharpening their knives back there and yeah. ready to... It was that a shotgun? <laughs> I'm sharpening my knife. <laughs> well, I asked because specifically with Elden Ring, right? Like that's a hero's journey essentially, right? Yeah. So this is what this is really cool about Elden Ring is you you can do um, once you beat the game, yeah. you can replay it with all your same stats and items and that sort of thing. But you can start going and doing all the side quests that you missed mm-hmm. because side quests will change as you progress through the story. Yeah. Uh, you can kill basically, I think, every single NPC in the game. Wow. And um, that can really change a lot of storylines. And there's like six different endings. Mm. And there's one really cool aspect. I'm not giving any spoilers away. But if you kill, or excuse me, if you commit to one certain ending, you ha- it, it's like the bad ending. Mm. But there is a way to reverse it, but you have to go like a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah, through a whole process to reverse this. And that's what I love. They kept the it's so detailed. Mm -hmm. It's so freaking detailed that whenever I went back to (laughs) I know I went to another game and I was like, this is the only we only have like eight items for this. This is so boring. In Mm -hmm. Elden Ring, you get like hundreds of items. Did you get encumbered at all or no? You know what encumbered means? Too many items, you're too heavy, you can't move fast. I know what it means. I'm just trying to think. In the beginning, it feels like that. Mm. But it keeps you invested Mm. because of that atmosphere that keeps pulling you in. Now, 
you get your ass kicked immediately. I remember when I first played it, you immediately said, did you, feed the, did you fight the first boss yet? And I had already watched some videos, and I'm like, no. I <laughs> watch people just get their asses handed to them. I did. There's one that's not even a boss. I don't even think you would. Maybe a mini boss you would consider mm. it. And it's like one of the first bad guys you see. And you're like, oh, I'll take this guy. And you just get your ass handed to you immediately. So you have to, like, avoid. You talking this. about the dude on the horse? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I got this guy. And you're like, oh, I do they not. They put him right Run. there for you. Right at, like, you, you enter the world. Yeah. There's just a giant dude on a horse. That's the uh, first thing you see. Yeah. So naturally, you want to just kind of like. Right. Run up it's to like him. your Green Hill Zone Act One. Yeah. But Fuck. he's just going to absolutely demolish you. Mm -hmm. as soon as you <laughs> Actually, that's not even the first boss. The um, the sen the sentinel or that crazy thing where you like get you you're born in the church. And oh yeah. Well, you're supposed to fail. Right. That. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you die, and then yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's pretty yeah. intense. Yeah. And did you play as a kid, like games as a kid, or? Oh yeah. Yeah, what did you play when you were young? Oh, uh, I mean, right off the bat, Mar uh, Mario on NES. Yeah, yeah. What else? Um, play Contra? No, Super mm -hmm. Mario World. Um, I, uh, 60, when I got 64, uh, Banjo-Kazooie yeah. was my oh, shit. fucking favorite. Any Zelda? Game. No, she's no. a big Zelda person right here. On, right yeah. on. Yeah, big Zelda person. Um, no, I like the Duck Hunt one with the gun. What else did I play? Yeah, I played a lot of 64. I used to love playing scary games, but I couldn't handle it. Mm. And now I love watching people, other people play scary games. Uh, we actually did a couple of videos here on the show with that. I was, was kind of curious yeah. because the way you were talking about Elden Ring mm. and that sort of experience that you have as the character mirrors a lot of what you talk about with your acting work. Like the... the this long path, this the details, this this atmosphere, like, and I wonder. Um, I was wondering if, like, as a kid, if any of those things were ingrained in you that then transfer now to you as an adult in your acting, or are these things in your acting that you feel like you just kind of developed over time. You've just always had it. No, I had de it's all been developed. Yeah. There's like a natural performance talent that yeah. I that I was born with for sure, but everything else has just been literal hard work, grinding, learning copying successful people what they do why they yeah. do what they do and that's it yeah yeah that's it what about for you do you feel like it's there's an like a natural talent to you as well and then you're just grinding i think away? there's a natural calling a calling i think there's oh. a natural calling to it okay. uh, i don't think other than savants i don't know if anyone's naturally talented um i think but you have a calling to something and that interest leads you to find more information that information tells you something about a skill set that then you try and then eventually you, you oh, I like that or that's I'm not bad at that thing it's like mm -hmm. you're a funny guy you remember being younger and your first time you got like a genuine laugh from somebody and you went that shit felt pretty good and then you run another joke you get another laugh and now you're on a roll and now you're just like you're the fucking funny guy and you're like holy shit I'm funny mm -hmm. like why well, I want to do this all the time now and the next time you try to be funny it fucking fails mm -hmm. and you go oh so there's work to this okay cool cool it doesn't mean that now you stop you let go of the calling of the thing you still feel it now you just have a new parameter, new information to work with. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of how I see it. That's that's how my early acting work really yeah. began, what you were describing, yeah. where I tried to utilize the same tools for every single thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I can't Yeah. I can't just scream at the top of my lungs for every yeah. anger, angry scene I do. Mm, speaking of your scenes, you know what you should pull up? Wh what? Your caveman tape. Oh, we've already played that on here. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, that's terrible. <sighs> so so cringe, dude. So, so cringe. Good. So fucking Me, terrible. Uh, mm, uh. Yeah. <laughs> it's so great. That's it. I respect you doing that too in class because, uh, uh, and it's never, I don't think it's ever for the teacher to be like, let me bring myself to a place where you guys can see eye to eye with me as like, a, here's my, here's why I stumbled too. Like, I don't think you guys need to do that, right? Like, there's a reason you are instructor. Yeah. Right? We're, we're here to learn. But I respect you for going, fuck it, I'm going to show you. Well, I think it's important to do that. Yeah, because it's going to help other people go. Oh, I, it's attainable where yeah. I'm going. It humanizes, humanizes the experience as well, right? Like, yeah, right. So I'm not as I'm not as my worst tape is not the best I can do. Right. You know. And also, your previous week's victories mean nothing this week. Right. I love you said that too in the beginning. You're like, maybe this week you're on top, maybe next week you're not. And I took that shit personally. Yeah. And I was like, fuck that. And I was just like, <laughs> nonsense. And you left crying. I, I remember that. Crying. Was that you? No, that was somebody else. No. <laughs> I don't cry. Okay. For free. 
we gotta watch this. Alex, do you have it pulled is it up? Real time. Okay, what here we the go. Fuck is this? What here is we it? go. This is I cannot express to you how much I love this video. Okay, I love it when real life hits people. Okay, and what yeah. do I mean by this? When you're you're not on automatic mode, mm -hmm. and you realize, oh my god, this is real. I could die right now. There's a visceral feeling to life yeah. that you have, right? Yeah. Right, guys? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Th those of us yes, with near-death experiences, I guess. <laughs> and so in this clip for the people listening, right. there is actually two zookeepers. We only see one of them in the beginning. And they're in a gorilla, a silverback gorilla exhibit. And for whatever reason, I want to see if we can find out more information about this after we watch the video. But the gorilla comes out of its enclosure and is in the open space. So let's watch it and see what happens. Oh my God. So right now, you see how she's not shutting the door? The other zookeeper is on the other side. Other side of the door? On the side of the uh, place, like right oh, there. She, she's holding it down for her. Oh what. my gosh. Look at this. Look how intense this standoff is. And I'm going to ask you here in a little bit, what would you have done in this situation? Look, look. The gorilla is still between them. Oh my, look, there she is. She's on the other side. She said, I'm invisible. This is incredible. God help her. God protect her. I mean, this is real. All that goddamn praying. Throw a banana in there or some shit. Help. Oh, here comes the gorilla. He's going towards the, the other zookeeper. She's hiding behind a tree. She's hiding behind a tree. Wow. Like Scooby-Doo. <laughs> oh my God. She's behind a tree. You know how terrifying she is. She's like to hide behind a tree, you got it. That's but that's a silverback gorilla. I'm hiding behind any fucking oh. thing. I would hide behind a blade of grass if I thought it was gonna help. Oh my god, <laughs> my heart is racing right now. I am I am imagining myself. Look at this. My thing is, do you think you could have made the jump? You know how there's like usually a big, mm. like gap. I feel like she could have made that jump. I would just need to know how far down the fall is if you missed the jump, because I don't think the gorilla's gonna follow. Oh, I, might take that bump. I don't know. I don't know about that. Can we skip a little bit ahead? Because I think we're almost at the end. Ooh, oh, ooh. here comes the girl. He's coming over the other side. And he now said, she makes a run candy for it. Ass over here. She makes a run for it to the <laughs> other side. Bro. Bro. Wow. All right. They lived. They lived. Oof. They lived. Thank goodness. We'd have a problem showing That's it on wild. the show if they didn't live. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And he I, grabs the bucket. He said, you. <laughs> This is like the Tom and Jerry thing. He was like, you left your wallet. He just brings the bucket over. He's like, guys, it's bad enough I'm in the enclosure. You got a litter too. Just wow. what happened? Wow. Somebody saw the King Kong trailer and was not happy. I mean, this, the, what would you have done, first of all? I want to know what Lance would have done in this situation. I'm going to be honest with you. I, um, I don't know if I have the right survival mechanics to like stay still play dead i'm fucking running dog yeah i'm hauling ass i think the the real question is if you get to the door first do you hold it open for the other person while the gorilla is staring you down 30 yards out crack it <laughs> crack, crack it, it. like so a little bit like enough it. where it's like if, if you make way. it here like you're getting in <laughs> but if the gorilla rushes me it's also closing. but like what if shit deals well right like the motherfucker's between both of us. Yeah. What is a crack door gonna do? No, 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 not like, not like I'm like peeking through it. Like it's gonna be kind of like at the halfway point. But the, what, what, like you, like how much right door in? is enough door? The gorilla's still enough between you and the door. Yeah, no, no, no. That's what I'm saying. Like the gorilla's got to make a decision. Shit. Either it rushes you and you're screwed, or you make it to this I'm, door hey, and get inside. If the gorilla rush, I might close that door. <laughs> it's on this side. You figure something out. Oh man, I love this. See. It depends also who's on the other side. You should just drop banana peel while she was running. That's that terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. You just became, we all became work. worse actors. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I've been fascinated with gorillas, too, yeah. for the past couple months. 
Really? I really have been. Yeah. I've been watching TikTok videos on gorillas. I love when they're eating something and they're just looking with their eyes. They're just moving their eyes. It's like a like fetish s- thing? Are you preparing for a roll or something? Uh, no, man. It's not a fetish thing, Lance. No judgment. Judgment-free zone. Sweet Sam's world. Yeah. Like that? There is judgment, actually, in Wee Sam's world. A lot of... Oh, there is judgment? A lot of judgment, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, there's a lot of judgment. That feels uncharacteristic of you. <laughs> yeah. That's not true. Does it? <laughs> so the incident happened officially because of a keeper error during the switch between them putting again. them in their indoor habitat while they put food outside for them. So Oof. Keeper error. Oh, so he was just like, oh, we got company for dinner. <laughs> Bro. Yeah. So. I mean, we've all seen the video of the gorilla grabbing the guy by his leg and just dragging him a few mm-hmm. feet, right? And to show you. He like, said, I just want you to know this shit could go totally different. Yep. Get your yep. ass out the mist. Alex, are you pulling that up? I can't. Please yeah. do. Oh, my gosh. That brings me so much joy. That one is, uh, I think that's a scarier clip. Yeah, of course. Because, <laughs> like, the other one is, like, it's, it's you know, it's tense, but she made it to safety. There was some distance. All right. But to have a gorilla just put his paw on you and make you feel like an infant. Mm. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? I, I can't express to you. If I saw one of my friends get dragged by a gorilla just a few feet and they lived, oh, my God. Ha- yeah. I'd be so happy watching that. Also, like, you need to go get a gorilla tattoo or something now. You're the chosen one. <laughs> you might be the oh monkey God. man. I love if I get dragged by a gorilla, I'm pissing on myself immediately. That's fair. Yeah. Oh, my God. Not even as a survival tactic. That's just straight fear. Okay. Would you... I mean, both would suck, but bear attack or gorilla attack? <laughs> gorilla attack. Mm-hmm. Gorilla attack. Good yeah. call. The gorillas don't have claws. You True. I mean? feel like you don't get your ass whooped either way, but if I take claws out the equation... I feel like that gorilla is throwing, throwing the yeah. fuck out of you, like just yeah. tossing you around. But I feel like gorillas also. You ever see like videos like gorillas get into it with each other? It's just, it's usually quick bursts. Yes. And yeah. Then, Good I point. Think, I, I think you, you can take a couple hits and be fucked up. You can heal. That shit will heal over time. Yeah. But that bear, Sam, I'm, I'm eating. Yeah. And it's dinner. I'm eating you butt first. Yeah. yeah. Butt first. Yeah. They usually do that. Did you watch The Revenant recently? Oh, my God. That's so disturbing. That scene disturbs me. Yeah. Is that a real thing? They eat, eat people butt first? Why? Yeah. Is it like a rump roast thing? No, they just don't go for, like, the vital. Or... That was a good one, right? <laughs> it's pretty good. I'm glad you're not in Peyton my class laughed. anymore. Peyton laughs at anything. He's changed. Untru- Whoa. We seem Whoa. to be a hater. Remember, we talked about this. Maybe you need to change. We yeah, Sam. I know. We Sam. But it's hard to change. It's hard. It's scary. I do it all the time, apparently. Right we, we seem going to cry on cue for you guys. Do it. Here we go. Well, acting. I don't want to. No, you should out. make your students uh, do that zookeeper <laughs> scene for class. <laughs> just give them the assignment. Like, and you there's a me. gorilla, and then then run. Or what is your choice? What's your motivation? <laughs> What's your moment before? I don't know because I'm dying. You know what? That's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> what have you done? I'm not joking. That's actually a really good idea. That that works great because I was contemplating doing a very basic creative exercise called three entrances and three exits. Mm. And uh, where you come in with three different entrances and three exits. Literally, each one should only be maybe five seconds long tops. Mm. And you got to figure out the most creative three entrances you can do yep. and the most creative three exits you can do. Mm-hmm. So that could be one of them. There you go. Yeah. That There's actually a is a there. good idea. One has to be life and death. Oh, that's great. That's actually a really fun acting exercise. That could be that could be good because that's something I expressed to you earlier. That's been really difficult for students, and I honestly mm-hmm. think phones are a big problem for this, especially the younger um, students I've had. Um, their imagination skills are subpar, mm. very subpar. I feel like everything's handed to them. There's there's actually benefits in being bored as a kid a lot, and you mm-hmm. having to come up with things yeah. on your own instead of having it all on your fingertips. What would you su- what would you suggest or recommend for for students or just for people in general to improve their imagination? Something simple that was that that I used to do a lot, and it was actually uh, reignited after a meeting with uh, a, a friend and a colleague, uh, Dylan McDermott. Mm-hmm. He told me sometimes I just go to coffee shops and I just literally just uh, daydream and I just sit yeah. there and I, I think about things yeah. I put my phone away and I just mm-hmm. and I'm like oh I love doing that it's nice it's, man. that's I think that's that's something that's helpful but also reading and we missed the commercial break we did that's my fault that's okay I was finding gorilla <laughs> videos 
That's all right. It's all wow. good. I knew. I was like, this is the l- longest segment ever. <laughs> Reason was like, and I'm running out of things to say. <laughs> no. Uh, I will like, own that one. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. Um, but yeah, I think those things help. Yeah. Also, reading a lot. Scripts. You need yeah. to read a lot of scripts. Yeah. I know I joke by saying, like, I only watch clips and stuff. Mm-hmm. But that's honestly been something recent. Just because of the, um, the volume of things mm-hmm. I've seen since, like, not only as a kid, but since I've started working out here professionally. I was just constantly watching TV shows okay, and movies. Let me ask you this. What's yeah. the movie... VHS VHS tape that you wore out as a kid. What's a movie you watched? Mortal Kombat, Annihilation. Mortal Kombat, the first one. No shit, really. Yeah. What you would you um, like about those? It was a, a Mortal Kombat Annihilation was the first film I saw in theaters. Fire. And I was in fifth grade, and as a fifth grade boy watching Mortal Kombat Annihilation. That's a pretty good one. Who did like martial arts? Yeah, Holy shit! One. I was like, this is this is the, the fucking peak Goro of cinema. Shows up for the first time, and you're like, mm. yeah, that's the shit. Yeah, Katana. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sub Zero, Scorpion. That's great. I gotta did you say, watch the re- uh, recent one. I loved it. Yeah. I absolutely loved the new Mortal Kombat. Did you guys like it? I didn't see it. I thought it was, it was great. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, and yeah. nothing like. Uh, I I feel like they hit all the points they yeah. they should have hit, mm-hmm. and it is what it is, and mm-hmm. that's. Yeah. I I wouldn't expect anything. More from it. If you're expecting more, I think. Yeah. It's based off a video game, (laughs) like a a fighting video game, so don't expect too much. Remember, I called it Goofy. (sighs) Oh, I unearthed a repressed memory from him. Dude, this drove him crazy. Because, like, the Mortal Kombat, the new one, the trailer dropped. And I don't mean this as a mean thing, but I called it Goofy. Because that's what I think it is. I think it's just over the top. Yeah, it's like Fast and the Furious fun. now where you're like, this is yes. fun. This is fun. Yes, and I use, maybe it's the wrong word, but I associate is the it, word goofy. Is it the wrong word? With that. I don't Feels think Feels pretty it accurate. Is. Campy? Nah. I'd say. Yeah, hmm. I think goofy. Teetering on it. <laughs> yeah. Getting there. Yeah, I don't think goofy. Yeah. That's the one thing we disagreed upon. I know. And I'm not going to bring it up because I feel like we have, I haven't seen you in a while and I miss you and I want to like okay. keep, Yeah. For the audience, okay. there's actually no one else here. There's just two puppets, and we send <laughs> keeps talking to something over there. That I've been playing along for his uh, own benefit, but it's pretty weird. creepy with that. I've been. Yeah. Let's Can you imagine the- just turn the camera. <laughs> it's just like two muppets just sitting there. <laughs> so gr- so creepy. I want to see this this uh, gorilla drag real quick. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, sorry, it disappeared. That's okay. Um. Are you on Peyton's laptop or your? Or, yeah, that's right, Peyton's. There we go. There we are. Oh, look at this. And I have to use a mouse. Oh, can we? Uh, oh yeah, this is the volume. Yeah, awesome. And then, look at this. Oh, it just gets dragged <laughs> away. There's I mean, no his face way. is like, oh cool, I just pooped. I just pooped. Yeah. Dude. Whole, whole suit is filled. Dude, that, that man has shit man. his clothes. Would you ever uh, go with uh, go with me to see gorillas like that in the wild? Are you talking like as close and personal as those guys yeah, were? Yeah, Absolutely yeah. not. No, no. Why you not? Do that shit? No, that's no. Why? That's just stupid. Why is it stupid? Because no one needs to be that up close and personal with gorillas. Do you, don't you feel like you want to feel that feeling being that close to something so dangerous? Doesn't that excite something in you? No, that excites you. Why do and you need weird. that feeling? It's so intense. Yeah. Don't, don't you feel like you want to try that? See what that feels what like? You I went to Antigua and got to swim next to sea turtles. That was that was the peak for me. That was great. <laughs> sea turtles? Yes. It wasn't dangerous. I felt like I was an avatar and shit. I'm okay. pretty sure that the sea turtle and I made eye contact, and I was like, "I'm the chosen one." I don't, and it's not dangerous. It's a sea turtle. I'm, I, I would like to feel that. I'm sure yeah. that's a feeling. It's magical. Yeah. You want you want to live on the edge and shit. I want to d- d- go into. Why the, you want to live dangerously, Weeson? Because it's so real. Life becomes so real in those moments. Yeah. Can you imagine being in the cage and the shark comes like the great white and he's like, ah. no, and you're like, Ooh. no. Oh, see now that can I, I ima- can I imagine up. a fucking heart wait, attack? Wait, you would do that? Yeah. Oh, cool. What? But, yeah, because like here's the Lord thing. Here's mercy. the thing. I, I, if, if there is some layer of protection, I'll probably take that. Like being Fuck in a cage that. like with the shark, like yeah. cool. Like I, there is a slim chance he's getting inside, so I'd consider it. That's what he but said. But just to like walk up and be like, hey. 
You can approach me, Silverback Gorilla. There's yeah, nothing stopping this. Fuck all that. No. Yeah. I, w I, yeah. I feel like you'd be the guy that goes to the petting zoo and you put your arm in the tiger cage. You're like, oh, do you see no. that? <laughs> no. I feel like no, 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 no. <laughs> see, that I wouldn't you just, do. You That's just stupid. want a bare knuckle box with a Silverback no. Gorilla. I've seen a couple of videos of like some Indian dudes <laughs> trying to do that and then he got his finger bitten off. Yeah. Yeah, I and I fucking that love that. Gross. It's Dude. Oh, boy, somebody snapping a rubber band. Oh my I god, said, I love that. I that's love what you it. Get? And there's this other video of this. Uh, I think he's like a some some dad and his kids are on the boat and he has like a sh like a little baby shark, and then he his pinky gets caught in its mouth and it twists, turns, and then the shark goes off and he's like, it bit off my pinky. It bit off my pinky. My <laughs> pinky's gone. <laughs> there's a child somewhere traumatized by watching right? dad's pinky get bit off, and I hope they find your show. My God. <laughs> <laughs> my God, can you imagine one day you're just oh, it's a oh, it's a fishing trip with my kids. Watch this. Uh, oh shit, my pinky's gone. Uh, Your pinky's gone, dude. Uh, That's life. That's life. That's a shit deal. I'm not tough picking up nothing that can bite some shit off. Bro. No way. And the and the, and the audacity to pick it up with such. <laughs> With such like, oh, I got this, and now yeah. your pinky's gone. Yeah, little, it's a humbling experience that I like. I feel like before that moment, he's probably like, "No, nah, it's fine. Don't worry about it." And then, <laughs> I think that's how those stories always play oh, out. So good. Or the people who jump on crocodiles, those people, or or the ones. Oh no no no, the ones who put their arms inside the crocodile's ma mouth. Yeah. That's dumb. It's also dumb. That people is. Put their heads in there. <sighs> What are you do? What are you doing? Putting your head in there? I want to know what's happened in life. Like, what are you missing out on in life? Where that's what you need? I'm not that crazy. I'm not putting my head in a crocodile's mouth. No, you just. I just want to go chest to chest with a silverback gorilla. Dude, that'd be so cool. <laughs> that's yeah. not the word. How do you feel I about use... walking again? Oh my god, that'd be good. Huh? <laughs> in all honesty, in jujitsu, I've rolled with some people that. Maybe you are probably like 210, mm -hmm. and that's already a fucking nightmare to roll with a gorilla that's what? How much do gorillas weigh? Like Maybe like what, three, four? Oh, 400 goodness. pounds? They're huge, and they're solid, yeah. like pretty much solid muscle. I mean, how much do you weigh? Uh, 185. Okay, I'm like at 170. Yeah. If I was like chest to chest on top of you, it would feel very uncomfortable, and I'm like lighter yeah, than you. It would you. feel very uncomfortable for me as well, recently. <laughs> walk right into it i meant physically i didn't say anything about emotionally uncomfortable uh well you get i don't know what that means do you do jujitsu no. no no do you feel like you want to do that at all is there a need inside you um i i feel a need for martial arts um i don't know if jujitsu would be it i'm highly interested in wing chun actually okay yeah. wing chun all right yeah. we had an intern here which i really wanted him to um come to a jiu-jitsu class with me because he yeah. drove me crazy and i wanted to is this what, this how you like take aggression out on people you're like <laughs> hey you ever thought about a little jiu-jitsu it's a little cool jiu it's a great it's a great stress reliever yeah. it really is you just like choke them the fuck out i don't choke them out i mean sometimes it's fun just to like hold them down yeah there's that's a great feeling to have yeah i'm trying to get Peyton to come yeah yeah i don't think so yeah i don't think my bones could handle it Choking. Just get his collar or something. Dude, what do you do? could you imagine if you did? I, dude, I'd be impressed. He I'd was impressed like, we send the show starts when I say it starts. His reach would be amazing. But that's, that's it. Fair. That is the yeah. one benefit. I, if you give yourself like two, three months just lifting weights, honestly, you'd True. be True. you'd be so fucking good. Yeah. And also, probably be fast too. our time on Adobe Radio has come to an end. So no, thank you it. for tuning in live. However, the show continues on. Make sure you follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and the full episode is also available on YouTube tomorrow morning. Um, so make sure you follow us there. Lance Williams is your name. Lance it, A. Williams. Yeah. Lance A. Williams. Mm -hmm. I have yeah. to say the A? Yeah, it's like Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, no. <laughs> so <laughs> That came out so organically. If people want to follow you and your podcast, where can they go? Uh, you can follow me at Go Lance Go on Instagram, um, and you can follow the podcast at In Love with the Process POD, uh, and all of our posts and episodes for Right Place, Right Time podcast are there as well. POD, not the band, correct? Correct. All right. You remember that band? Yeah. All right. The show continues on. Um, 
Youth of the Nation. Yeah. Is that one of their songs? Yeah. Youth of the Nation. Because yeah. I'm the youth of the nation. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That nice. was good. Ooh, if somebody's really got a karaoke song in them. What is your Hot karaoke dog. song? Um, Four Nine Blondes, What's Up? Prince, Purple Rain. Wow. Uh, Alice in Chains, Rooster, or Man in the Box. Whoa. And if I'm drunk enough, I might do Marvin Gaye. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that was about the. <laughs> what? What were you gonna say? No, I'm right not gonna get my. I'm not gonna get Peyton any work to uh, bleep me out. Oh Lord, trooper! Wow. We actually uh, almost. Oh my God. Oh, uh, uh, okay, because should we give a disclaimer here with this? Don't ever do this. I think. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. do it if yeah. you're stupid like us. But like, go ahead. Tell them what happened. With oh, okay. The, uh, yeah. So we did the. Do you know? Are you familiar with the one chip challenge? Yes. All right. So it was. Uh, I'll take responsibility. This is my dumbass decision. <laughs> but they were casually selling them at Seven Eleven, and I saw them, and I sent we see him a photo. And I was like, "Do we do it on the show?" And uh, him being the supportive friend he is, hell yeah, we do it on the show. So we got the one chip. It was. Oh, it was bad. We had to pause the show for like 25 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Damn, that bad. Well, huh? we, oh. But the aftermath is what was the worst part about oh, it. Shitting? Can we is, pull that up? Oh, yeah. It felt like my stomach, it, I was being stabbed multiple times. Ooh. I it, it, To That's get a little bit graphic, guts. yeah, I forced myself to throw up. Yeah. When I got home. Oh, that must have been worse. And everything. And I just sat there in the bathtub for like two hours, just like sitting there, Ooh. like in hot water. It was bad. So if you do it, what we've always you talked about. You sat in hot water? Yeah. Helps my stomach. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Did was... you do to in the tub a little bit? No, I didn't. I might have, though. It's probably I don't close. know why I felt disappointed about that. Like, yeah. it was missed opportunity. Yeah. You saw it. me, I said, nah, nah. <laughs> I could have. But yeah. uh, we've always <laughs> talked about uh, if we were ever do it again, we're sp- Spit out. spitting out the chip. Yeah. Yeah. Right, because the aftermath was way worse than how hot the chip was. Ah. It was the literally worst pain I've ever felt in my life, and I've broken bones. I've had yeah, really? um, yeah, I've had like some. I've I've experienced some serious pain in my life. That was by far physically the worst pain, and my reaction to it was very surprising because I was trying to mentally process what I was feeling, mm-hmm. and I didn't say anything. And he's like. He was started talking because I, yeah. I was like, I can't. <laughs> we gotta keep the radio. Were you show guys going. looking for something to like ante up the show or like a like a just like some fun little gag thing to do with each fun. other? It was going on at the time. Everyone yeah. was doing this challenge. Yeah, and then you walk into the store and there it is. <laughs> there it is. It's right got place, its own right cardboard time. cutout. And they're they're <laughs> stacked like I, candy. I don't know if I told you this, but I felt it moving through my stomach. Oh the no! Heat. I didn't know this. Like That's going bubble guts. Oh man, I was like oh, when when pretty. I I threw up yeah. as well, um, and I think the next day we felt like we just had been like had the flu for a week or something. <laughs> like we were just like, <laughs> oh man, I don't I don't yeah. ever want to do that again. Is this it? I think See, this is it, dude. That smells favor? hot. Can you <laughs> <laughs> don't get any yeah, of the dust the in your nose. Oh, you oh so Zeke sad. was here during this. Zeke did this. Oh, he yeah. did a Zeke small did bite, a tiny oh, little bite. Which, like, so now he's cool. a little bit of a coward, and I'll call him yeah. out for that. His reaction okay. was too the big whole for chip? how small of a bite the, he took. I, the whole chip. Dude, I I'm will, literally going to What the fuck is on that chip? Uh, I don't know ghost if I pepper. Can this it was a Carolina mouth. Reaper. Oh, Carolina. Yeah. Uh, it's like seasoning. Then, like, uh, what you but the whole do? gimmick of this specific chip was it turned your tongue blue. Yeah. Honestly, I don't want to eat the whole chip. You said Cheetos did that. I don't want to take a big bite from it. Okay, half. I was being a bitch about, like. Wow. Oh. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm feeling oh. it. You feeling it? Oh yeah, How go back, go back it, a little Mr. bit. Krabs? <laughs> no go. point in like ruining right. our evenings. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All yeah, right, yeah. ready? I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Um, Dude, that ain't cheers. poorly. All right. All right. Cheers. Cheers. That's a big fucking bite. Whoa. Absolutely fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Peyton, you're a boss. Nose. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Wow, Peyton. Peyton, you're a fucking boss of this. Seriously, look at that. You're it's immediate, immediate help. Because I do enjoy hot, spicy things. Oh, I barely but took this a bite, was... dude. Fuck that. Ooh, it's on your hand. Wow. Um, you feeling that? I'm feeling it. You feeling it? Are you you're feeling it? You're sweating already. 
Dude, dude, that is brutal. I haven't seen this in a while. I look like me? death. You. And it's wow, getting Peyton, worse. you're a thug. <laughs> Talk it out with me. <laughs> Talk it out with me, Keith. Talk it out with me. Keith. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. It's like you're know. you're high. <laughs> what do you have to really say? Red. I think it's so red. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> it's like if you, you need, need to be burped. <laughs> it's bad. It's like pain. Your eyes are really red bad. Oh yeah. All right, we're doing the milk. Look at Zeke. Zeke's gonna throw up. It just he's he's contemplating oh, that made everything. Feel a little bad. But then it that just comes right back. Better. It just comes you right back. <laughs> you take like a sip of milk wow. and it's good for like a second and then it all just comes straight back. I just want the audio of you doing this. <laughs> you said, wow. Save By the way, the milk, or the yogurt thing, whatever we were Woo! drinking. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> you are a different beast. Are they blue? Are they still that, blue? That literally God, did. Ah! <laughs> oh, I left. Oh, no. oh! I remember you, that you stuff. A second milk. Was, a fucking was doing nothing. It was a big. As mistake. soon as it hit, then it would go away. That was the worst thing I've ever had. <laughs> Dude, you are. Wow. You are moist. You, are you look moist. like you're you shitting right now. You. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you can't even open your mouth. Dude, Air hurts. It was. It was. It was a crazy pain. Woo! I don't know how to explain it. It felt like almost like rubbing alcohol <laughs> in your mouth. Like I that, know. that kind of that that peroxide burn. sting. Yeah, but mm. different. Like the heat was incredible. Yeah. The heat itself. This is where the show just kind of halts for a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Fuck! <laughs> that Zeke. <laughs> Zeke was done. <laughs> I just love the silence and then someone screams. You started pacing the whole entire building. Yeah, I I I I needed to get up and move. Like that was gonna do anything. So yeah, walk this off. Alex having a blast. Uh, yeah, I was like, you didn't yeah. need a chip. Yeah, oh, no. I mean, I it's can't rough. eat Taco Bell. Okay. It's really bad. It's way too spicy for me. First, Peyton? Really? Yeah, we've right. gotten yeah, better you can't living do in this. Los Angeles. Start like, yeah. seen a lot of spices down here. Yeah. yeah. Um, but this I just don't do so well with spicy relief, things. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh yeah, it ended with just it's you and me chilling in the studio for a little bit. Oh, Zeke and We Sam were gone. They just dipped. Oh, ten minutes later. Oh my God, that's hilarious. I really considered saying. We should go to urgent Hospital. care. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would have uh, shut that down in a heartbeat. I would have been like, nah, nah, you're good. Whoa. Look at my fucking lips. Right? They're so red. Jesus. You're, you look so oh. sick under your eye, too. Yeah. Dude, oh. this was 217. That wasn't that long ago. That feels like ages no, ago. No, actually, yeah. guys, this is episode. We are. It's like less than a month ago. 280. Oh, episode. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Let's do shit. it again. Fuck <laughs> no. I watch y'all motherfuckers do that shit. I'm not doing it. We did a, a one of the guys' night things. We had we were sponsored by this great sushi place called Studio Sushi, and we yes. did. Yeah, we did. They made us a bunch of surprise rolls, and mm. so it was either spicy tuna, or wasabi, Ooh. pure wasabi, and so. You had to like pick one at random, and it was hidden. So once you ate it, we had to guess whether you had a spicy tuna or a wasabi roll from your Shit. reaction. Yeah. Ooh, that's fucking brutal. I love. So it's that. just just wasabi in the center. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, a lot of a wasabi. Lot. A it lot was, of. It was like, coated on the inside. Fuck. Yeah. Who had it that's and was cool. like, tried to play it off? Do you remember who? If we don't, that's fine. I think it was Jordan, but I can't remember. Yeah. Who. Yeah. One of my friends was uh, It was his first time doing a guy's night I think yeah, this yeah. was episode 200 And he uh, was so nervous In the beginning of the episode Like his eyes were already watery and stuff like Shit. that Yeah, And he actually got the dog collar on him uh, A shock <laughs> dog collar Where the fuck did that come into play? Well we all got presents randomized That yeah. you would pick which present you wanted And that would be your punishment yeah. for the whole episode So what was that like the greatest uh, Most extreme show on television Remember that show? No it was like Splashdown, but it was like the Japanese uh, game shows. Okay. It's really good. Yeah. Great stuff. Um, before we head out, um, this has been a blast talking with you, by the Thank way. Thank you for having me. It's been great, man. Um, I uh, I love that you're doing the podcast. You, I, I wanted to compliment uh, you and uh, Mike, right? Yeah, Mike. Yeah, Mike. you guys have some – it's it's really nice listening to you both on, on the show. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I – I think those kind of stories are really important for people to listen to mm -hmm. for two reasons. 
it makes your goals tangible knowing that, okay, I can get from point A to point mm. Z. I just have to take the proper steps to get right. there. And also everybody's journey is different. So I don't need to like compare myself, but at the same time I can learn from everybody else's journeys. Mm -hmm. And um, it makes navigating life realistic and achievable, which I think is very important for a lot of yeah. people nowadays because the world can be a, a negative place, especially mm -hmm. nowadays with what we see on the news and social media. Yeah. And so I think it's really important to have these stories shared and it's really cool you guys are doing it. So yeah. well, th I think the biggest thing for us is to hopefully give back to the world something positive and to let everyone know that the right place, right time is exactly where you are. I love that. Uh, again, where can people check out your podcast? At In Love With The Process, P-O-D on Instagram. Uh, there you can go to the follow the link and that'll take you to uh, the Right Place, Right Time podcast. Uh, you can also follow me at Go Lance Go and uh, my other, the other host, Mike Pesci, at Mike Pesci. Great. All right. Peyton, place out. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I really appreciate you all. Make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube, the bell icon. Leave a comment below and uh, let us know if you would survive a gorilla attack or a bear attack. That's really important. We're trying to take a survey for uh, statistics. <laughs> um, make sure you follow Lance's podcast. Um, really appreciate you. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, hit the subscribe button. Leave us a review as well. It helps with the algorithm if you have some time. Appreciate you. Follow us at We Sims World, And always remember to listen, think, and then talk. Bye.